Good evening. This is CTV News for Thursday, April 18th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Janine Samuels. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, after nearly two years of waiting, the American people are finally getting answers about special counsel Robert Mueller's report on Russian interference into the 2016 presidential election. Attorney General William Barr released the long-awaited redacted report this morning. Melissa Wright is here to tell us more about the findings in that report. Well, I can tell you guys, it was a lengthy report. It would take hours and hours to go through that document. The report is 448 pages long, as you mentioned, and it's been re redacted, so portions of the documents were blacked out. I was able to read quite a bit of the document. Here's Attorney General William Barr speaking at a news conference this morning about why he chose to not consider obstruction of justice charges. The special counsel's report did not find any evidence that members of the Trump campaign or anyone associated with the campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in these hacking operations. In other words, there was no evidence of the Trump campaign collusion with the Russian government's hacking. The report details how Russian intelligence officers hacked into Democratic email accounts and used social media to spread disinformation online. Now, despite Barr's conclusions, the report did highlight what some are calling damning information. In the report, it reads in part, although the investigation established that the Russian government perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and work to secure the outcome, also the campaign expected it would ben uh, benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russia's efforts. Also, According to the document, shortly after the special counsel's appointment, President Trump told advisors that this was the end of his presidency and he engaged in efforts to curtail the investigation. Now, the document is 448 pages long, and I'm sure as the dates follow, more information will be released. All right. It's uh, quite interesting. There's some that new stuff that came up. What is the White House response to this? Uh, so there was conversations had that said initially the DOJ released um, copies of the report to Trump's legal team ahead of the public's viewing. Uh, they denied that information and said that they got the document as it came out. Um, and so uh, there's also talks within Congress about the redacted version. Uh, at a later date, DO the DOJ is supposed to um, give them a version with less redaction. So so, you know, hopefully we'll learn more as uh, time continues. All right. And speaking of Congress, where are they on this right now? Um, you know, I think as uh, many Americans, I know it for me, I read the executive summary and that was about 11 pages and it took me almost an hour or so. So you're talking about 448 pages. Um, it's probably going to be weeks before they come to a final conclusion. And you had mentioned the redaction part of it. Is there possible, possibly an ongoing investigation that we don't know about? Oh, so I, I wanted to mention that also. Um, in the Mueller report, you'll find large portions of it blacked out. Um, and so according to Attorney Barr, I'm sorry, the uh, Attorney William Barr, uh, that portion is redacted because it is in fact an ongoing investigation. Okay. So thank we'll find you. out more, I'm sure, of the goal. All right, thank you, Melissa. All right. Well, meantime, CTV spoke to residents in Greenbelt about what they hope to find in the newly released Mueller report. I don't know how much we can believe in it because it's been so redacted, but hopefully the truth will win out. Based on how long it took to really get to the information, I feel that it's something that's being, I mean, that's my opinion, that's being covered up, that something is going on that, you know, just being hidden from the public. What all the actors in this play, for lack of a better word, uh, were doing what their roles were, uh, how they functioned. Um, was anyone pressed into doing anything uh, contrary to U.S. law? Well, in other news tonight, sweeping reforms of the University of Maryland medical system are signed into law this morning at the State House. The legislation will remove current members of the board, bar no bid contracts for members, and require an independent audit. House Bill 1498 was sponsored by the late Speaker Michael Bush and is one of numerous measures the governor signed today alongside of Senate President Mike Miller and Speaker Pro Tem Adrian Jones. We're going to be signing 195 bills into law, uh, including uh, legislation that uh, Speaker Bush would have been proud of, including much needed reforms and transparency at the OMS board. The speaker served on the University of Maryland Medical System board for 16 years. And um, so when this incident occurred, uh, when it was discovered what had occurred there, he was in shock. And um, 
because the past year he'd been involved in treatment and he hadn't been his frequent attendee, but nobody told him about this. Nobody, he had no idea, and he was a board member, and so he, he reacted very, very strongly. But the, the impetus was uh, Senator Carter, Senator Jill Carter, Car Jill Carter's bill that brought this to the, to, to the light for everybody. So sort of a teamwork of the Senate and the House, and uh, we've got a tough bill, but it's a good bill. It sends a message to all nonprofits. Important crime and public safety measures were also signed into law today, including a bill that increases penalties for repeat drunk drivers and cyberbullying. Also signed into law, a measure that designates June 28th as Freedom of the Press Day in Maryland in honor of the five employees who lost their lives during a violent shooting at the Capitol Gazette. Well, the countdown is on. In less than two weeks, a replacement will be chosen for the late Speaker Michael Bush. Three contenders, Delegates Derek Davis, Maggie McIntosh, and Adrian Jones are all vying for the top position. We asked several lawmakers their thoughts on the candidates. I've been reached out to from each one of them, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Have you made a decision yourself? I am supporting Delegate Derek Davis. We've worked together. I've known him for many, many years. We've worked together, and um, and we've been helpful to one another over the years. Well, I'm part of the Republican caucus, and uh, we plan to vote as a, as a block. Um, and I couldn't tell you right now, you know, which candidate is uh, going to get the block, but uh, that, that was our discussion that we would be voting as one unit. I will be voting for Maggie McIntosh. And the reason why is because we share a lot of the same values um, and I have uh, a lot of respect uh, for her work like I do for the others, but her values are very much in line with mine. And Governor Hogan signed an executive order earlier today calling for a special session on Wednesday, May 1st. The session will allow the House of Delegates to elect the successor to Michael Bush. A disorderly conduct arrest of a skateboarder is captured on cell phone video in College Park. The arrest first reported by the Diamondback newspaper occurred as a group of young people complained that they had done nothing wrong. According to the newspaper, two officers approached the skaters and immediately told them to sit on the curb. However, when they didn't comply, they were forced to the ground. You can hear police and the skateboarders arguing as a 21-year-old was placed in handcuffs. Hey, one, 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 all right, one. Do you understand the English language? Yes, I do. Sit down. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Hey, Sean. Sit down. You were guys Hey, Sean, Sean, Hey, relax. Sean. Just like me, you want to go to jail? Sean. Now, the beeping that you heard was actually cursing in the video, so we wanted to make sure that any young viewers did not hear those words. The 21-year-old was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, failure to obey lawful order, and resisting arrest. The incident happened around 11 last night at College Avenue near the University of Maryland. Police say they received 911 calls complaining about the skateboarders. County police didn't comment on the incident.